Alpha.5 Make It Your Own is all about bringing more variety to the game. There's a cool new mission type, a new level of customization for vehicles, and a new way to shut down other vehicles so that you can board them. The original plan for this patch was to add EMP devices and a chance to use them, but that plan shifted in a few different ways as playtesting went on. The game needs a device that can shut down a vehicle for long enough that it can be boarded without permanently damaging that vehicle and without being an easy I win button in normal combat. As I started to look into EMP devices more though, it started to feel like that archetype wasn't really a good fit for this. First off, from what I can tell, pointing or shaping an electromagnetic pulse just isn't really a thing, so it would likely hit the user just as hard. I'm not completely bound to realism, nor am I confident in my understanding, but I really like that as an interesting drawback, and it felt a bit slapstick for this role. Additionally, there's a question of how long the vehicle should stay shut down once it is down. With a one-press tool, there isn't really an easy source for that duration, and it's not obvious especially to a targeted player, why the pilot couldn't just immediately turn the ship on again. Any particular device might as well boot up after three seconds as well as an hour. So with these thoughts in mind, I realized that what we needed was a device that could stick to the target vehicle and shut it down that way. I decided that instead of uh, electromagnetic interference, they should just suck all the power out of the vehicle. This better fits into how I already want to simulate ship systems as generating and consuming different resources, and it didn't necessitate me adding some other system to track how much pulse or corruption or whatever other weird thing the system was clogged with. Now, EMPs aren't forgotten. Their role in timeline has just shifted a little bit. The plan is now to make them spike power levels to zero and sever connections to the communications networks that the drones use, much like what happens to drones when they enter the sacred no trespassing zones around the wreck sites. This could still function as a good panic button for players, as in the original design, and could be a part of the drone theft that I want to get into the game as hacking mechanics develop further. So expect the Blackjack EMP to make it in at some point soon, this just wasn't the month for it. We've got a fresh new mission type for you. In the package interdiction mission, you'll need to chase down and shut down a hover truck that's carrying a load of packages from one gate to another, with a few potential stops along the way. Blowing up the truck won't make anyone happy, as it will completely destroy the packages, so you'll need to find a way to bring the ship to a halt for long enough to hop aboard and grab a box. Right now, the ticks are the only reliable way to do that, but you might be able to figure something else out. Bring that box home, and victory is yours. The Able Skiff was developed by the Able Hands Corporation to fill out their short-haul overland logistics and keep goods and materials moving between their factories on Able. It is a ground-based hovercraft that carries a moderate cargo load, no armaments, and one pilot. Since it's a land vehicle, it's much easier and safer to operate, and so many companies use Able Skiffs or their own in-house variants. Its sturdy, inexpensive, and reliable design makes it good for planetary shipping, making it largely equivalent to a semi-truck of the current day. And, conveniently for us, its innocuous and non-threatening nature also makes it good for smuggling and infiltration, as it doesn't tend to draw a second glance, as long as it's in a place where shipping traffic might be expected. Now, the Able Skip was originally planned as the target vehicle for the interdiction mission. However, due to a few technical issues with the terrain, along with the AI handling flying much more easily than I'd expected, that role was given to the hover truck for now. However, it will still be performing its intended role of ground logistics in the future, and I still wanted to get it into the game now, as it's functional, easy to drive, and fun to mess around with. Alpha 3, Sado, saw the first pass of customization with gear selection, in which you could select which four tools you were carrying. Now vehicles are getting the same customizability and more, with a much more beautiful and flexible UI being rolled out for both gear and vehicle selection. I'm happy to say that this new system is very flexible, and I'm looking forward to using it in the near future to try out more kinds of functionality in terms of different vehicle components like engines, sensors, storage, maybe even cloaking devices, and other such subsystems. And also personal technology that could accomplish similar things. This is also a nice step towards cosmetic customization with different paints, clothing options, ornaments, and of course bumper stickers, all being accessible through this sort of interface in the future.
Now that vehicles can swap out their hardpoints, I added a few more options for vehicular weaponry, and there's a lot more gadgets coming soon. We got the Barrage Missile Launcher, which fires explosive rockets, the Ripper Shotgun, a pair of which can shred through most things in a few close-range pulls of the trigger, the Snipper, which can toss high-impact shots with great precision, and the Spewer, which has a terrifying combination of high fire rate and high spread that allows it to completely saturate an area with bullets. I'm taking the same design perspective on these weapons that I am with the rest of the gadgets. They are useful tools with a fun and interesting identity, and they're built around a thing that they do, rather than a specific situation in which they excel. So, what comes next? First off, in April, I'm replacing inventory in the plan with pacing. So, I think it's too early for unlocks and gating content. For now, I think the game will be better tested and more fun to play if everyone has access to everything from the start for just a bit longer. Expect unlocks to come sometime later in the year. Now, pacing, on the other hand, needs a little work. The level design of the game needs some more pacing and layering to move towards more of a heist feel. Right now, you're never more than two quickly melted walls away from your physical target. And with a little luck, your actual time at the target can be less than a minute for some missions. So I'm going to focus on enhancing the level design to make players have more to think about and more reason to stick around a little longer. Additionally, uh, the name is going to be changing. Skyjackers is a nice snappy name, but there's too much violence in it and not enough of the other values of the game. I'm narrowing things down, and the new name will be announced with the next update. I just wanted to give a heads up. Now that we're into April, it's time to start thinking about plans for July. Which brings us to the hacking revamp. The current hacking system has some cool effects in terms of being able to look at through others' cameras and views and gain access to other communications networks. However, the maintenance panel minigame really needs a revamp, and I'd also like to add more access options as well. This could even lead to a new mission type, but time will tell on that. Hey, new Patreon! So, I've been working on this game for a bit more than a year now, building out systems and figuring out how the gameplay and the world are going to work. Throughout that time, a bunch of people have asked if I have a Patreon, and until now, I've said no. I didn't want to accept money until there was an actual game that could be played, but now there is, and it's pretty fun. Now, playtesting will always be an essential and appreciated way of supporting the game, and I really mean that. But there are special benefits for those who choose to support financially. Perks for signing up uh, vary by tier, but they include, uh, first off, a special Discord role and access to some channels on the official Discord server. There's also sneak peeks at things that are coming soon or a bit further out. You can also get access to polls uh, that will help sort of prioritize content and get a feel of what the most passionate members of the community are really after. The first poll is for a new kind of drone to be added. Made humans, eye drones, and quadcopters are cool, but the game needs more variety, and the players can always use more utility. So this new drone will be the first to launch as usable by both players and defenders. And yes, that does mean that eventually, eye drones and made humans will be stealable and usable as well, but that's a little ways off for now. Right of Interrogation. Now, with the final Patreon tier, once per month you'll be able to ask a question or make a suggestion, and I'll give you my best well-thought-out response in a video like this one. There are 10 slots, and until they fill up, I'm going to slip in a few of my own questions, just to fill in information that might not be visible in the game itself yet, and to make clear why certain decisions are being made. Alright, so first question, from me. One of those statues mentions the mesh. What is the mesh? The Mesh is a network of planets, all connected by great technological portals that allow near instantaneous travel between them. There are dozens of planets directly connected in this way, and many share star systems with other less accessible planets. Each planet is different, but they share tragic similarities. You see, as each new planet was discovered, there was no founding of a new civilization, and no real new beginning at all. There was only a continuation, a colonization. Planets are owned, and by tradition, planets are always given to friends as gifts from the owners of whatever planet discovered and connected them. 
Owners of one planet almost never openly interfere with their peers, and owners of one planet are often eager to aid their peers in maintaining stability. This has led to centuries of ever more efficient control. Now at times there are rebellions, even things that the histories could call revolutions. But even when the faces change, the system stays the same. The owners look after their own, and the rest must serve in hope of scraps. <sighs> what a fantastical and unrelatable dystopia. I'm so glad we don't live there. Anyway, check out the links for the Patreon, the Discord, and the game itself in the description. It's time for me to figure out this whole YouTube thing, so I'm going to be making videos for each update. Subscribe to see the next one, and I'll see you around.